Hops and Stocks podcast is presented by 100 Spoke Media Group. We encourage our listeners to drink responsibly. Please note, we are not financial advisors. We do not offer or provide financial advice. I'm Spoke affiliated from the city of gyms. Welcome back to the Hops and Stocks podcast. This is episode 31 brought to you by 100 Spoke Media Group. We got uh, the homeboy, Koo Williams. Um, Koo is a senior manager of vulnerability and IT audit for CyberShore. As you can see in his background, um, he did not authorize that with us first. We do charge for publishing, I mean, promoting your business on our pod. So we expect to check after this show. <laughs> but it's, uh, oh, it's March. What's up, Koo? How you feeling, man? I'm good. I'm good. Glad I'm glad to be here, brothers. Glad happy to be women's, here. Happy Women's Month to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what so, I tell you, cool. I'm just saying, be ready. Yeah. I'm just be ready. No, just happy happy belated International Women's Day to you too, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Let's 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 get a women they respect, man. And yeah, man. <laughs> let's give them their respect. Um, it is the beginning of March, and so you know we will be celebrating or recognizing women in beer with a couple of our offerings this in this podcast. Um, as we learn from our, our brothers in drought season, you know, women were an integral part in, in creating beer. Um, so we want, we want to make sure that we recognize them here at the Hops and Stocks podcast. And I believe Blast and Doug have, you know what I'm saying, some, some offerings to, to share with you guys. But, you know what I'm saying, like we always do about this time, I'm going to kick it over to my homeboy, Mr. Mouthache. Mr. What's in this can? Tell them what you're mm-hmm. drinking on tonight, beat up. So, yeah, let's talk about it, man. Um, what was that? Yo, I don't know what that that fugazi was. <laughs> yeah, that's come from That's come from Miku's, uh computer, man. I know, man. That's that's cybersecurity oh, yeah. over here, man. Infiltrating that's, our pod. No, man. It's in cyber. <laughs> We're getting cyber attacks, man. <laughs> know, man. It's cybersecurity over here infiltrating the pod, man. <laughs> man done. And, and unleashed a Russian worm on us, man. <laughs> right, man. He over here. He over here live. He over here live streaming our joint, man. Right, man. We, hey, man. Got shut, got shut down your device. Everybody got shut down their device. Right, <laughs> we gotta keep Log this off. cat over here, man. <laughs> I mean, we should be safe tonight with CyberShore in the house, hey, man. Right, man. I mean, Cy- Cyber Shore is the front. <laughs> that was the he over there testing new products on us, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, right. I don't know what that was. <laughs> so, <laughs> like you said, it is Women's Month. Um, one uh, fact about that um, is that uh, out of 8,000 breweries, I think 2% is only women-owned. So... I'm glad we're shining some light on some women today. Yeah, I don't have an offering, but you know, Blast and Doug do. Today is a street side offering. See that can work. Got a Cincinnati. Nope. Um, it's an apple brandy um, style uh, stout um, barrel age and apple brandy, fifteen uh, percent. So you getting um, it's boozy, um, dark. I'll show you. I'll Hold on, out. rewind that. You said 15%? Yeah, it's 15%. Woo. Oh, yeah, you're getting on up there. Yeah, that's solid. It's black. Y'all can see it's in that phenomenal chalice right there. If you just turn that around. <laughs> yeah, man. He, so here's the, here's the thing. Every time he's re- reviewed a brew out of that glass, it's been ass. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be ass with the champs. But, uh, you know, it's a uh, dark boozy, uh, 14%, so we're strong. Uh, so you get that that vanilla, um, dark chocolate. The the barrel aged is from Kentucky. So these are these barrels are from Kentucky right here. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Bought this. What uh? What kind of uh? I guess uh, not brandy. What kind of bourbon is aged in? It doesn't say. Doesn't say. Well, apple brandy. That's what it says. Um, that's I bought this yeah. single, so it was 15, 15 bucks for a, for a single. A dollar a percent. I can dig it. So it better be good. I'm gonna make it good. (laughs) Uh 
Uh oh. Oh, here we go. Cool. I'm yeah. sorry about to witness this beat up by the active fool. You know what? <clears throat> Maybe what's in this can real quick, man. Um, I've had this before. Um, Eric got us hit when we was in Nashville for Brew Fest, and it was pretty good when we did that review that y'all will never see because <laughs> the footage. Is- <laughs> 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 you have the footage, man. Lost footage. Lost footage. I actually like this. Um, it was good back then. It's, it's better now. The flavors haven't come out because I just cracked it maybe like 15 minutes ago. But yeah, I get this off top, man. I, it's, it's four and a half. Okay, that's what's up. Hey, that, that deserves a little. Look. Oh, yeah, it's it's big. Big. Hey, just make sure y'all talking so we, <laughs> we don't get kicked off of YouTube. Tim is from the Hooligans in Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was only, yeah. It was only five seconds. Uh, RIP Big. Yeah, RIP to Big, man. Um, Street Style Brewery, um, Apple Brandy, uh, 12% on AB. It's 12% on ABV. My fault, Blast. 12, not man, 14. That's still, that's still good. That's still yeah. strong. Four and a half. There it is. Four and a half. What kind of what kind of notes are you getting on it? Dark chocolate, a little bit of vanilla. I do get that boozy because it's, it's it's coming through my nose right now. So <laughs> it, it check all the boxes as a as a potent potent little drink. I don't know if you want to be reaching for this often. This is a special occasion. Uh, since since uh, we celebrating Big and Women's Month, I figure I I break it on out. Yeah. Dig it. I don't want nothing coming through my nose though. Like, what is what's that feeling? It's heat. <laughs> it's that, it's that heat. <laughs> Asian uh, apple brandy barrels. Okay. I'll kick it off next, man. If unless you want to, Blast. Oh, you got it, sir. Yeah, we we received a list of um well, we researched. We did we did our research and there was a, quite a few breweries that were claiming that women held either ownership position or leadership position. So I chose um a brewery out of Columbus, actually, called um, Seven Sun, and I went with this evening. I went with their offering of um, it's called Assistant Manager. It's one of their flagship beers. It's an American uh, Golden Ale, and I mean, you know, I, I got started a little early, man. I was trying to get on to kind of get situated. And I've been I've been sipping on this, and I, I enjoy it. It's um, I like ales anyway, and just a little information about it, it's uh, um, four point five, so it's not real, real heavy or strong. It's thirty six IBU. It has a crisp, crisp floral hops with breakfast cereal like maltiness, and uh, one of the, it says, one of our most crushable beers. So this is one of our flagship beers, and I enjoy it, man. Seven Sun. Um, obviously there's some female ha- hands that went into brewing it. So we're happy about that as we celebrate women's month, um, women's history month, pretty nice can, you know, nothing too spectacular. Little kitty cat. Kind of catchy with the black and white. Yeah. yeah. Sipping on a, I don't know, that's a long bottle or something to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. I mean. You know, I don't want to be rude, but I'm about to get another one. Yeah, I like the color on it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get out a a rating? I'm drinking out of a the proper L glass where um I would give it <clears throat> a four. Solid, no, I mean solid four. You know, it's not, you know, it's not kicking me to the wall like man, this is great, but you know. Solid four for the for the price that I paid. I got a six pack. Um, you know, four is good. You know, yeah, you can't beat that. Did you get that at our spot? No, nah, um, I started going to the other one, man, because their selection is just so much more better for real. Gotcha. Only thing is at that spot you can't buy singles. So the honey hole is good from the standpoint where you can just snatch one off and not be really committed. Yeah. At the other honey hole, you're you're committed. So it's like. Um, <laughs> Actually, uh, B Dub, I grabbed the last street side. I'm gonna review it next week. It's like a raspberry blueberry joint. I'm it's called Raspberry that. Beret. Yeah, you already had it. No, nah, I seen it. I seen it. Yeah. Before, yep, yep. So, 
But again, I had to buy the whole the whole four, so hopefully it's good. And I can't I can't mess with that. I'm a singles man, man. If you ain't selling singles, <laughs> I, I, can't even, I can't even mess with you. You're a single man. You're a single man. <laughs> but uh, I, I did ask though. I mean, you know, I was like, man, can I snatch that's <laughs> that's one? He was like, nah, we can't do that. He was like, beat it. <laughs> you know, at the other spot, I mean, I guess I can just call it Jungle Gems. At the other spot, they do have a whole wall of singles, so I never really go over there to check. But I do. Nah, okay, it. yeah, yeah. I think I've, I've seen that wall before. So, uh, pretty good, you know. Like I said, I'm, it's almost finished, so you know it's not that bad. All right, well, I'm gonna take the baton, and uh, we're gonna sure. keep the the women's uh, ownership theme rolling we're gonna take it out to the left coast i got some of that west coast uh <laughs> this is called lost coast brewery and it's tangerine tangerine is the name of the brew um there's the can decent can work um it's basically you know pretty simple it's a wheat beer and it's brewed with tangerine uh 5.2 on the alcohol and i'm not really a fan of wheat beers um i didn't know it was a wheat beer until after i had gotten home so we're going to see what it's uh, hitting for. It smells great. I mean, the tangerine and the citrus notes coming off of this is excellent. Let me see if I can give y'all a shot of the pour here. Yeah, there it go. Yeah, it looks good. Oh, yeah. Nice color. That's going to be fire, man. Oh, yeah. It's really good. Um, it kind of reminds me of that um, Rattler that we had that heated discussion about. Um, it's not as it's not as sweet as that. So for those of you who were turned off by how sweet that Rattler was, this will probably be more your speed. I am getting that uh, that wheat taste on the back end that, you know, I'm not a huge fan of. But, uh, you know, the tangerine does balance it out a little bit. I'm probably with Doug. I think I would get this. I'll give it a four. Yeah. Only it's one definitely uh, crushable. Only one I think the beer people call it sessionable. So, you know, you can enjoy <laughs> more than one for sure. Only one person had a problem with the sweetness, man. That was E. I don't beat up wasn't feeling it either. Oh, you don't like that Rattler either? We had we had Rattler in Nashville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's when we did that review. Yeah. It was that, that was, orange can. Yeah. it was. Y'all was crapping all on it. It was so many different, better selections that night. Uh, you know, it was it was unmemorable to me. I can dig it. Oh, <clears throat> uh, uh, you know, shout out to Lost Coast. Um, what are y'all doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm done. You can, you can take it, E. You sure? You got it. All right, yeah, I, cool. I was just saying. You know, just sending a shout out to the brewery and letting cats know where they was at, Eureka, California. Shout out to my uh, HH2. They had uh, several of the options that was on the research that we did. So nice to know that, you know, we can get a lot of different varieties there. Right. Different styles, right. all that good stuff. So, yeah. so you guys are, are fans of sweet beer. So, I, um, am I am personally. It depends yeah, on, the, I, on the level of sweetness. Um, I do like fruit forward beers. I don't like a, it, that just, that particular beer just was, and just for me, just was overly sweet. Um, and it had more of a, an artificial sweet taste versus like flavored by fruit. My favorite milkshake IPA, Ace, it was just like a drink <laughs> that head, man. Drinking cavities. <laughs> but you, well, but you got international? I love Yeah, candy. man. Yeah, it's international E checking in from Mexico. Um, and just like last month, you know what I'm saying, the fellas choose to, well, I don't say the fellas chose to, um, but Women's History Month was a was a curveball to me because I'm in Mexico and I'm drinking fine Mexican brewed beer all month. So once again, I don't have access to any <laughs> women owned, women, women led, but I love the ladies. I love y'all. Trust so me, I love the Title scene. Nine beer out here. <laughs> <laughs> I love the ladies, man. Sounds uh, discriminatory to me, man. Discriminatory. I love, beer, I love the senoritas, man. I love man, the instead of international e discriminatory. E. <laughs> 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 right. I love the ladies. So, 
beer over there. Man. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> hey man, I'm not gonna let. Hey, so the last the last episode that if y'all already checked out episode 30, you'll hear all the beeps. At, at one point in time, we probably gonna release all of this uncut footage in a behind a paywall. Um, we'll see who's the discriminatory one. Like, <laughs> 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 but anywho, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm choosing to go with, so this is a uh, Baja Brewing Company. Um, and they actually have a brewery down here. I haven't made it over to it yet, but this is readily available in the, the local grocery stores that I've been hitting up. Um, and so I've actually tried, I believe like their entire line just by the grocery stores, but this is Peyote IPA. And so it's a 7% IPA. Um, and once again, it's out of down here in Cabo San Lucas. Um, check it out. The color of this mug is, is kind of crazy for IPA. Oh, yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's like an amber color. Amber, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like an amber color. So I wasn't expecting that when it came out the bottle, man. But it's a, a nice, nice, pretty color. Um, let me give it a sip real quick. A pretty color. Yeah, it's pretty dope, man. It's it's not grapefruit. It's not heavy on the grapefruit notes. You're getting more of a like light orange kind of tangerine and lemon type taste to it. Um, not overly hoppy. I'm assuming the IBUs on it is pretty low because it's not hoppy at all. Like it's 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 a really drinkable IPA. Um, I would give it a, a four um, just because when I drink IPAs, I, I, I prefer the more hoppy IPAs with the higher IBUs. This is delicious though. I mean, like it, the drinkability is high. It's just not what I look for when I pick up an IPA. Um, once again, this is Baja Brewing. I'm giving this a four. I'm probably going to buy some more while I'm down here signing off. International. You give beat. us a, um, a ABV on that one. Seven percent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a decent. Um, I did a, a little bit of research on Baja, and the owner actually is from the states. He's from Colorado, um, and he moved down here to to Mexico to to open up a brewery. Mm. <laughs> Cultural appropriation beer. <laughs> 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 Hey man, say that again. What you say? <laughs> he said cultural appropriation beer, man. Hey man, hey. Last, last you need stand up. Pretty you, good. You put that good. suit on, boy. You are a whole different um, animal. One, boy. one, <laughs> one note that I want to mention: um, the first black brewery. I'm sorry, the first brewery owned by a black woman is Harlem Brewing. Uh, it's owned by yeah. Celeste Beatty. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure you know what I'm saying that we mentioned her. You know what I'm saying because that's 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 big. You know what I mean, there's. Only one time to be first. So let's give a shout out to uh, Celeste Beatty. Huh. I'll raise so my, my glass today. Yeah, yeah man. man. Cheers, cheers, I cheers. Think we need to uh, see if we can order some uh, some Harlem Brewing and get that on the show before the month month ends. Yeah, we can. Uh, with, with this Aku glasses, what, what, what you hold over there, Aku? Well, because I couldn't find the Aku beer, this is the actual glass, but I'm sipping on some. I don't know if you can see it. Some crib. Yeah, crib. there we go. I know big crib. <laughs> yeah. It's a, man smooth, make it. it's a smooth light lager, you know. You know, being that I have some uh tropical blood in me, you know, I like my beers a little my lagers a little bit light. You know what I'm saying? I like to stay fit. A lot of styles is kind of heavy for me, but I like a light, smooth uh lager. Um it is five percent on the, the Richter scale, so that's not too bad. Not too bad either, but I, I actually had this beer when I was um, on an island. So when I seen it, I usually grab it. You know what I mean? Oh, for I, so you, I, think uh, I think I've had it in the Caribbean before, man. Bahama. Yeah. Are you Haitian? Are you Haitian yeah. What are, what are you? <laughs> I'm a black American. I'm, Afri I'm actually African American. Like you said, to be you said it from the right. islands, right, Haitian island or what? I mean, where? <laughs> So I'm from the I'm from the island of Columbus, Ohio, <laughs> by way of Cleveland. I said I was in the Caribbean wow. when I had this. When I I've had, had that the, too. That's uh, pretty good. Beer. Yeah. You enjoy it? Ain't, ain't, ain't you from the island too, man? Where'd you get huh? it from? Ain't Doug, from Doug, Doug ain't you from the island too? <laughs> ain't you from the Midwest? Ain't you from the uh, Middle East? <laughs> where'd you, nah. where'd you, you get it from? Yeah, where'd you get that career from? Uh Jungle, not Jungle Gems, but uh, Party Source. Oh, okay. So, 
you mess with craft beer or is this like, you know, something that's kind of new for you? No, I do craft occasionally. You know, um, I don't do a lot of fruity stuff, but I do I do a style. I like my IPAs. What's your go-to? Uh, What's your go-to beer? I, I don't even have a guy. You know, what you bought that one right. over by my house, Doug? It's a new brewery yeah. on the north side. And they're, at, they're actually about to build another one in Mason as well. So they, they Wh- which one on north side, Cool. Uh, man, I got to think of the name of it now. I sent it to the Doug because he started the monks? on the north side. Is it the one with the monks? No, I don't think got monks. Hold on. I'll look it up. I thought that was Hamilton. I thought the one you sent me was in Hamilton. It's on Hamilton Road, but you know, north side, okay. Hamilton okay. Road. It's closer okay. to Clifton. Oh, okay. Down that gotcha. way. Yeah. That's what's up. It's a, it's a nice little brewery. I go down there a lot. We're going to hit it up. We're going to hit that up. Yeah, they're real cool in there. And they got like this back part where you can go and just grab all sorts of different. I, I know, I know what you're talking about. Uh, gravity, higher gravity, yeah, like that? higher gravity. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice spot. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> they got TV, yeah. TVs in there. TVs. Yeah, TVs and a bunch of taps, and like like Koo said, they you know basically have a, a honey hole in the back where you can you know buy whatever you want. I think you're allowed to bring it out front too and drink it if you want. Yeah. I have to might have to visit that for uh, March Madness, man. <clears throat> yeah, that's a nice spot. Yeah, it's a cool spot. And then like when it's warm, they got the uh the garage door open windows that kind of opens up to the outside as well. So that's a cool little spot. That's cool, man. Okay. So hey, cool, cool, man. Tell us about your um no, I was gonna I, I was gonna echo the same thing that Doug was saying. Go ahead and uh, jump into your background. You know what I'm saying? What you got going on as far as businesses um, and things of that sort. All right. Well, <clears throat> well, CyberShore is, long story short, what we do is we do cyber assessments on networks to uh, ensure clients have the adequate cyber liability insurance. So what we do to get there is we identify all your vulnerabilities that are on your network, both internal and external. Um, we do, we trust but verify it. And then we'll also quantify your overall data that's potentially exposed on your network. So we compound all that information in different types of reports. I provide recommendations based off your vulnerabilities. And then based off the level of exposure or vulnerabilities that you need to mitigate, then we also work with um, insurance carriers as well. So we all know people are going through ransomware, giving Bitcoin, it's, it's heavy in the news right now. So what we do now is actually the good part and bad part, right? The good is it's helping my business, the bad is people are getting breached in ransomware. You know, that's, that's the reality of the situation. But what we try to do is essentially help them mitigate those risks on your network. And by, by us doing that, if you are a client and you want cyber liability insurance, we making sure like, okay, here's your data this is how much you need to truly be covered by. Here's a different type of examples of cyber liability coverage, because you can have, we'll just say a million dollars worth of data that's on your network. You want to make sure that it's adequately covered, you know? So if you're not adequately covered your breach, then either you can get denied if you're not doing the right things to mitigate the risk, or you got to come out of pocket because you weren't adequately covered. Think about car insurance. You know, if you gap, think about gap insurance, once you roll off the lot, your car depreciates, right? But if you get gap insurance, you get hit and totaled, you know, it takes care of that that gap. Insurance is insurance, you know, at the end of the day, insurance ain't trying to pay nothing. So you want to make sure you cover, but you don't want to be underinsured as well and come out of pocket. It's all once, you know, $500,000 million in Bitcoin. Yeah, that, that was what I was going to ask. You. Your company is only worth X amount of dollars. So what's happening now, these small, medium-sized businesses are going under because they can't afford to pay the ransom. And yeah, if you can't run your company because all your information is on lockdown, you're done. So does your so company uh, prevent prevent people from getting hacked in, in those situations or do you kind of help them deal with, you know, once you've been hacked and someone is asking for a million dollars for you to get your data back, is that kind of where you guys step in or do you try to prevent it all together? We're in the middle of that. We we help you be proactive 
Mm -hmm. We can't, we can't stop it. We're more con on a consultation service. So we're, we don't do the tactical piece, but what we do is we bring in our partners to do the tactical piece. But what I can tell by the assessment is saying, here's all your, here's all your risks. And if you want to be adequately covered, we need to start mitigating those risks and eliminating some of those things. Or if it's real bad, bring in a partner and help them work through it. So if you're a small company and you don't have like a chief, chief information security officer, we offer that as well. So we have a partner that will come in part time, you know, from a consulting service and be that CISO that you don't have, um, you know, incident response plans, disaster recovery. A lot of companies, small, medium sized business don't always have a good one in place. But now that everybody's getting breached, what's going to happen if you were to be breached? You got to have those things in play. How are you backing up your data? Those sort of things. A lot of companies think they're doing well, but they're actually not. And, and they're finding out the hard way once they get, you know, get that ransomware. So what, what, are, what, are, what are some things that are being breached? Like, are you talking about employees' personal information? <laughs> um, you know, what, what, what type of things are being put out there? Everything. So you got your personal information. So say if someone breached uh, your email or your house or your network at your job, you know, they would get your, your information, Doug, depending on what's on their network that's um, exposed, right? So I can get Doug Toller. I can get your social security numbers. I can get health records if you're in a hospital. Um, if you work for, uh, think about any type of industry, that information is on there that would prevent you from doing your job well. So if I lock that down to where you can't get to it, now you owe me money and then I'll release it. But see what they're doing now, they're actually like nice people, like the bad, these cybersecurity people, they, they really just, they just want the money, right? Their, their intention really is not to truly expose you. Um, they just want that check, right? And then once they, once you give them some Bitcoin, you know, they'll actually tell you what to do, how to do. You know, they're, I mean, that's literally 800 numbers you call. Like, they'll send you an email, yeah. we lock you down, you call them, they are like, you know, send us the Bitcoin, we'll tell you where it's at, how you've been breached, walk you through the process, have a, have a nice day. So then, where, where are the regulators? Like, where, where's, like, the cyber police? Like, I mean, can you They're out there. <laughs> they're, they're out there, but you, you can't police something. Is everything is counteractive, right? It's reactive. Same thing if you break into a bank. You could be like, man, where are the cops at? Well, cops are always around, but you can't stop the actual robbing of the bank until they're in the process of robbing the bank or it's afterwards and then you capture them. I get that, but you, you just mentioned that somebody gives you a 1 800 number. I'm like, okay, police, call this 1 800 number because we have know. <laughs> You know what I mean? But if you well, I'm not exactly 800 numbers, so let me okay. put it more perspective. They're, <laughs> you're contacted, right? You you are contacted, but there are um, numbers they can you can call. There's ways to contact them where they're essentially walk you through. You know, some of it is more international because they can't be caught, right? So like Russia, America knows Russia is doing all sorts of stuff, but we can't touch them because they're in Russia. But they can still get into your network. That was probably the most versatile type of crime there is where you can just sit at home with your feet up and break into somebody's network, lock it down and get a couple million and then release it. Yeah. Ho hospitals always getting held for ransom. And yeah, because I mean, you, you the thing is, if I break in, lock your information down and threaten to put it out there now from a HIPAA standpoint, you know, you're, you're baking those regulatory um, things, but then you can get sued. Because now you you're not putting the proper controls in place to prevent this, and now you know we found out my information is on the web or out there that you know someone was sick and has some sort of disease, and that shouldn't be out there. So and, and plus, like you said, I mean, if, if someone locks your data, you can't do your job. Right. Now you come to work and you know your your network is locked. <laughs> it's like, okay, what do we do now? And, right. they, and they pay that ransom too. Yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of companies pay because a lot of companies now it's so deep now that companies now will hire um, law law firms. So companies, big companies, they already have law firms are on retention. So because if they were to be breached, they don't want their information 
to get out. They have a PR firm, forensics coming in. They got to protect their brand. So remember when like Target and those big companies got breached, right? Yeah. If they would have had a law firm and things in place, a lot of information possibly wouldn't have got out. There's people getting, large companies getting breached all the time, but it's, it's locked down, it's protected. And then the lawyers and the forensic teams are actually working with the uh, cyber criminals to get that, at least that payment down or finding better ways to pay him. Mm. So it's wild. It's like Wild Wild West out there right now. Man. Aside aside from like business and just the regular consumer, because I know I've been, uh, my identity's been stolen and I've gotten emails about it's been a breach at, at this place where my account is, blah, blah, blah. So once you get that notification that you've been breached, blah, 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 what, what are some steps that the, an individual could do after that? Like, what do you do? Just I mean, I, I panic because I didn't know what to do. If you if you get an email or I don't know if you guys are getting those texts now, it'd be like from the bank and, and have like a link in your text message. Don't even click on the link because it's a setup. You know, you should already, your, your banking, your financial institutions should already have protocols that, of course, you know, we got to read to find this information out, what they do if you were truly to be breached. So if you think you are, either go into that branch or actually call the bank itself and then they'll validate. But what happens is like in your case, Bill, you get annoyed like, oh snap, I've been breached and it has a link. Let me click on this. And, and the link says, enter in my, my information. So I enter in my account information to verify, boom, I got you. That's simple, you know? And you know, there's, there's code that gets ran behind on your network. And then now I lock you down or I'm able to take your credentials so like if you're using, you know, bdub at hotmail.com and your password is Michigan sucks, then uh, uh. You know, what they'll do is they'll, they'll put those credentials in like amazon.com and go to various websites and go to various banks. And it's just a script. Like they're just taking people's information and they're just constantly running. And next, you know, it's like who ordered Amazon or who ordered this or who did this because they're just taking information and just going to sites and just running scripts. And like it's, it's, it's big, it's big business. And, and right that's now. what happened. It's like I went to, I went to Macy's and, um, I was buying some polo and he, she was like, uh, you can fill out this, uh, Macy's credit card and get, no, I think it was like 15% off or something. I was like, all right, you know, ran it. It got denied. I should have right. got denied because credit card. She was like, well, they're going to give you this number. You call it and they tell you exactly what it is. She's like, but I'll still give you the, um, the percentage off. So I called. And it said that I already had a Macy's credit card. I'm like, listen, why would I be applying for a Macy's credit card if I already had a Macy's credit card? Somebody I already mm -hmm. used my identity, had a Macy's, and then it just went down the line. I had a Macy's, I had a Costco, I had something else. It was all in like Wisconsin. I'm like, I've never even been to Wisconsin. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they were just eating. So they opened, up, they opened up these accounts yes. and they was, trying to, they was trying to max them out same day. So yeah. it threw a red flags. And they just put them on hold. That's the only reason why I didn't go through. So ever since then, I put all these fraud alerts, fraud alerts on my accounts. Other than that, you know, I'm saying I don't, I, you know, I don't know ex specifically what to do to to keep that from not happening. You know, from, so from that standpoint, it's one: if you're using passwords on different websites, constantly change your password. Um, that's one of first thing as irritating and time consuming as it is to remember Dang. passwords constantly change it um because like i said you and I'm, I'm victim of doing this too as a lot of people you use the same username and password at most sites right it's the easiest but once they are able to because you might not be breached so here's an example right you might use the, your um they can get your email address say off of linkedin right so it might be we'll use this login we'll We'll assume that's his username. And then we'll use that same password, which we were able to extract just to run in, um, run all sorts of scripts. Then once we figure that out, we're able to get your information in a lot of other places. So that's 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 how smart they are. And it sounds like, it sounds like cool that you can be on the illegal side if you chose to be. I, I could. I'm not that savvy though. It, it's the next level to programming after that. But I can. For example, like for phishing campaigns, one of the things we do is we create fake emails and send those out throughout organizations to see if someone's going to open it, someone's going to look at it, 
who's going to uh, enter in their information, right? And then, of course, if they enter in, they fail, they're flagged. But that's how people are um, getting hit. I mean, people are using, what did it say? Doug, you send an email to, uh, to be dub all the time at detailer at hotmail.com, right? But instead of having my email the there, period man. teller, it just says my damn email. <laughs> well, let's switch it up. <laughs> but but as, as an example, you know, you someone would take the D out, the detoller. B dub wouldn't recognize it. And you might say, yo, man, send me wire me this information, put give me your account number, or vice versa, right? But you're not realizing that's not Doug because you're not realizing yeah, you the gotta look close. Gone. So it's like, boom, I'll send you that information. And you know, it's, it's some cat in the Ukraine chilling he didn't you know got wired that money's gone but people are actually doing this you know so this is what, some of the stuff that we consult on as far as from an education these are things you have to look at you know scroll over when you're looking at the email i mean there sometimes these bad actors are actually in your network for like three to six months watching communication between like directors and their admin or managers and their peers so they're able to actually emulate Doug talking to you like what up homie hey man I'm wife is tripping I gotta buy her some roses man I lost my credit card hey shoot me over some money oh no problem Doug I got you boom it's not even Doug but that's the way y'all talk and you wouldn't even think twice about it and this is going on in corporations and then I'm realizing the peer is gone or I put an extra s on the name it's little tiny nuances that they're doing and even they're in, they're even copying like the signature lines, right? So if you think, nah, Doug wouldn't call me and ask, you know, shoot me an email, but they put the number on there. So I'm just going to call them. But you calling your boss, you know, no one really remembers their boss's office number. So the, the number that they put in is really to the bad actor. So they can call and, you know, maybe an admin or somebody just answered the phone real quick. Yep, that's legit. Send over that, send over that wire. Okay, cool. I hang up. <laughs> <laughs> you just validate it. You think you 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 think you did all the things right. He would never ask me for money. I called him. I'm thinking the admin answer. Nope, it's somebody else. And you still wired the money. So I mean, they're 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 quick, man. Uh, and and that's somebody, where a lot somebody of in their living room, somebody in their living room answering uh, the phone. Hey, cool. uh, right now, it's a lot of the emails. A lot of emails. Just clicking on that link. You know, everything looks similar. Like I clicked on um, a link just to look at it. The Fifth Third sent me something. Yeah, link. yeah, man. They always send the, me. The, the the website that they connect to exactly like Fifth Third's website. Verbiage, colors, everything. But if you hover over the URL, it takes you to somewhere completely different. Yeah. But if you don't know that, then you can be like, okay, this is my Fifth Third. Boom. User ID. Boom. Account number. I got you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm out of they, here. They almost got me, man. You you sent out a um you sent out like a warning to people about that fifth third. Yeah, yeah. In the next couple of days, I got a text message. I'm like, nah, man. Cool, told me not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cool. To back up a little bit, when you was talking about the insurance, um, and to use your analogy about gap insurance on cars, like how is data value? Because I know you know, saying say you pay fifty thousand for a car, when you drive it off the lot, it's worth forty five. You know what I'm right. saying? So that gap is, is 5,000. So you have a value based upon the purchase price of that car. How do y'all value these companies' data? Um, the value of the data really depends on how the, how the company works, right? So you can have certain data might be like EPHI information. That's critical. You know, that's information about your employees. PII, that's your personal information. You know, social security numbers, credit card numbers, all this is valuable information or just financial information that your company uses that you don't want exposed. So that there's always a value to that. And there's algorithms um, that can be used to kind of calculate based off the, the type of data that your company uses that's potentially exposed. So we look at that algorithm or we do our, our calculation based off the data that we found or that you as a client would say, we have all these type of records that we have 10,000 important records in our network that if exposed would break us. What's that 
that value. So we would do our calculation based off that and give you a value. Shut down, there's a dollar value to how many days. Calculation we do with that as well. So think about the day of, if you're out three weeks, what's that money look like? And that would affect your business, that loss of business, that loss of revenue. Um, and all that really impacts your, your business. So from a data standpoint, it's not necessarily a gap. It's really how much, if that information was locked down per how many days, if you're locked down, how much would that take away from your business and affect you financially? And that ends up being a lot if you can't work, you know, and, and yeah. same thing where a lot of companies are pushing information to the cloud. So they're thinking we're protecting now our information is in the cloud. Well, then you still have to put in a calculation if Amazon goes down, we use their, if you use their web services or any other cloud service, if they go down, that still will affect your company. And your company is the one who takes the reputational risk from that standpoint. Because if I'm a customer, I'm not yelling at you. I mean, I'm yelling at you, but I'm not yelling at your third yeah, party Amazon, cloud provider, yeah. right? You have, right. I'm working with you. So you got to work with them. But now it's your reputation has, has taken a hit as well. So it's, it's a lot of factors that's involved in kind of what we do um, to make sure to, your company's being proactive before something does happen. Because it's not a lot of times when it is going to happen, it's just really when and how much it will impact you when it does happen. So we've all been breached yeah. already. Your, 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 your email domains have been compromised with dark web reports where essentially your email domain is just kind of sitting out there. But it's not been done. They may have a couple of people in their email domain. Oh, I just a couple of years on our web. And they just to get serious. This is serious. This is people big business. I mean, it's to the point now, if you if you do enough search on Google, there's people offering their service as ransomware. So say, say you got fired from a company and you mad at your company, you can hire somebody, put ransomware on a company and say, hit them for, we'll just say 500,000. The, co the guys will probably say, I want to take a percentage of that and let yeah, me get my crazy. cut. Cool. Of course, of course, the cyber criminal, he's going to take the higher cut. I might just say, let me get let me get 100,000. You take the four. Cool. Give me a couple days, then a couple weeks. Let me work this out. Let me find my way in there. And once I'm in there, we good. And you want, you know, it's, and if you're that good, why not offer your services? You know, That's a legit sure. Google search, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's out there. You have to really search, but it's it's out there. How do you protect that, man? Like when 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 I search, you know, my name and my name, cell phone number comes up, address. I mean, how do you protect against that? Or, or, you really can't it, because a lot of the stuff that they that we're allowing, wow. right. it's not used in a negative manner, but it is. You know, they people are selling our information, and and that is big business. So what happens is your information is being sold here, here, here. And then one of those other organizations that bought it, they get reached, boom. And you don't even know how and where it happened. Cause you've been, everything about all the apps that we use, websites we go to, you gotta check that little act box. We, no, nobody reads it. We're just trying to finish up so we can use that website. Right, app. <laughs> right, right. right. You know what I mean, we don't think about it, but they're right. basically you agree. saying- They're like, do you agree? But like, yeah, I agree. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> trying to, try to use that app real quick, man. Yeah. Like, all right, all right, all right get through it now if you know you what you're not saying what you're not reading is you know we're going to take your information and sell it are you okay with that and what they saying, need yeah. what they need to do is they need to have a timer on those uh <laughs> when you read the little disclaimer or whatever it needs to be like a, a five minute timer if you <laughs> click on it before that five minutes i know you ain't read that <laughs> Like you could have read this. Right. Yeah. Come on. They wouldn't do that because they will lose business. They, 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 they trying to get it in that five minutes. Uh, like, man, go ahead. Yeah, I think I mean, it's right. usually a small little box that's probably we gotta scroll. You don't even have to scroll anymore. Just click the the, the check box and it's you good. Mm -hmm. Some websites you at least gotta oh, yeah, scroll. Yeah, they, they do so make they you scroll. Good, right? yeah. You scroll. He did something. <laughs> Some of them, they just got the box. Like, did you read everything? You're like, yeah. <laughs> but, like, you didn't, you didn't scroll nothing. <laughs> hey, you look, you look, and they say that they have like 100 million users. Like, man, I'm just one of the 100 million. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Hey, cool. Uh, I want to pit for a second and talk about uh, some of the things you do outside of the company uh, with UC. I know every once in a while, 
I'll get an email from you, you know, in your UC capacity. I'll be like, hi, I'm like, yeah, that's my guy. Cool. Talk about, uh, you know, some of the resume, you know, the board of governors, uh, you always rep in the college of business. I rep that too. So from, um, from a UC standpoint, so I chair the African-American alumni affiliate for UC. And then I, I've been sitting on the board of governors business college for like the last okay. six years. Um, I started off there. Um, actually, a friend of mine who's actually a partner of mine at CyberShore um, put me on and asked me if I wanted to do it because they needed some, basically, they needed a black voice. And right. it was just a bunch of, you know, older kind of white people that would sit on the board. And how are you going to be the voice of students or helping students out, but you have no one on the board that looks like them? So I just took it as an opportunity to be the, the voice of the black people. Because as you know, it was not a lot of us in the business college. So um, that was my whole, really my whole focus. I came in there kind of energetic, raised some havoc a little bit um, to kind of get some things started to where they can kind of just see literally one, yes, we might have some black students, but we're not even retaining them. Like their whole thing is we're, we're getting them in. What are we doing wrong? Why are they leaving? Like the, the black experience in the business college is not good. Like it's, if you're an 18 year old coming in from a majority African-American neighborhood, you're coming into a business college and there's a handful of individuals that look like you, that's intimidating for a lot of 18 year olds, both male and female. And there's things that you want to join. You don't know how to, you know, we don't know, really know how to network yet, really how to get in a swing of things at that age. So what happens is they transfer out to college. Um, so we had to find ways to retain them and we started putting some programs in place and then the business college started investing in certain programs as well. So once those programs started kicking up, one of the things we do is we sign off each year on a budget um, for all the different type of groups or organizations inside the business college. So I just made sure that, you know, the black led organizations got all the money we needed that start. So uh, you, at this certain, I know what you're doing left behind. So we, and then um, once those things were there, retention started going up. So I think right now, as for African Americans and business college, I think it's more, it might be the highest it's ever been as far as having them in a business college. Now, the next step is to retain them. And then that's a whole nother, a whole nother re step. Re re retain sometimes experience or sometimes it's just you have that money to afford to come back another year. So what, what things are out there financially um, that are out there to kind of help students as well? So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to be on the 4A alumni, um, because I felt, one, we have a lot of African-Americans that's graduated from UC, but they don't know about a lot of the programming that can be uh, funded to really focus on the Black student. And that's one of our failures, as you see, that I'm trying to change culturally um, within, you know, you see all the red tape. But the reality is, you know, and I'm, I didn't give anything back to UC, truly I got on the board. And so I was like, all right, I guess I got to give back, right? So if I'm gonna sit on this board and talk all this shit, I need to give some some money back, you know, to money speaks volumes like when it to comes to UC. To get in the club. So, I know you ain't paying back to the school, man. <laughs> right. It's a tax write-off, though, so it's, it's advantages. You know, I ain't just giving away money. So, <laughs> there it is. Like, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, wait a minute, it's, it's a write-off? Okay, okay, I can give a little. I can give a little change back. Let me write that off my taxes. But it was still overall. Even if you talk to other Black alumni, it was their experience at UC is one of the main reasons why they don't give back. Because what we paid for our education, we walked away with a degree, but it was pot. It was bought and paid for by us. We're still paying back student loans. But what really was there for us that in your heart was like, I want to give back. So what's going on now is there's a lot of initiatives that if you're playing the money game with UC, you're looking at it holistically. UC is saying, what is the Black alumni giving back to uh, UC? And their numbers are, are very low. But if we're able to say there's a discretionary fund, there is... Um, the Shawnee Scholarship Fund that allows Black students to travel overseas and study abroad. There's advanced, there's all these different programs that if we were able to promote them, then as Black alumni, I'll give directly to that. 
you know, I'll give to that discretionary fund where a black student can't afford books. I'll, I'll put money in that fund because I know it's going to help directly help a black student. So these are things that I'm really trying to push as alumni for, hey, collectively, you see, we'll see now black alumni are giving back. But now we want to do more things for black alumni to help raise money. Now we can get more backing from the University of Cincinnati to help support alumni initiatives. Her, I mean, what list are y'all pulling from? Because, um, you know, I'm a proud UC alum and I, I don't receive a whole lot about, you know, giving to initiatives or anything like that. Um, Blast and I are both Dharma T. Turner scholarship recipients. I mean, I would love to be able to give to Dharma T. Turner scholarship just alone, isolated to, to that organization. What's what's the, um, where are they pulling from? Like where, where are they getting information? Yeah, and, and that's part, and that's part of the problem that I'm trying to, you know, even though it's voluntary, that's where I'm trying to raise the voice or raise that awareness around. Because like you said, if you and Bill had or understood or got information on that, so you give direct to Twitter, that's more scholarship for another black student. You know what I mean? Right, right, but if exactly. you're not getting that information, how can you give back? So that's that's really a lot of internal stuff that's going on at UC gotcha. that they're really trying to work on um, right now. And so if you have that and think about other other scholarship programs, I mean, it's, it's avenues that we can give back. So if we have, 10 swim lanes where black alumni can give back to whatever swim lane that month they want. Collectively, you see, we'll see all oh, black alumni are giving back. Then if we want to do something bigger, then now we can hold weight because you see is looking at now we have a rate of return. What's our ROI? That's like, okay, they are giving back. So let's give more money. Like the the black, the uh, Onyx and Ruby Gala. Like you see how to help us out with that. You know, it's only been going, it's been going on strong the last couple of years. But you had to have people kind of push and be a voice. They'd be like, y'all giving us scrap. You're trying to raise money like, you know, the other alumni and y'all, you know, President Pinto, the presidents wouldn't be there. It would just be like, here, y'all can just go do your little fundraiser thing. But then it's not even been truly being supported. So now it's truly being supported and we're starting to raise more money. And again, uh, it's just, it needs to be more accessible because I didn't know that Onyx and Ruby was for everyone. I thought, you had to be invited. I know we could just buy tickets and go, you know. So it's, yeah. So that one. I'm glad, I'm glad you um you spearheading that man. Just do a better job. You know what I mean? Just do a better job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is your, do you have an email? Yeah. I, you just gave out his email a few minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> right. But you know, we'll uh, talk though. Do you do you get the email like like blast? I, mean, I, I get that. Email. I get that spam. I get that spam from you. But I don't. I don't be. Oh, <laughs> no, we're back to we're back we're back to what black people don't read. So now. <laughs> now <we're doing> that. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to double check. I mean, I, I'm sure it's, it's in, it's in my, there. It's I'm in sure there. there's something on my end I need to do. But overall, it's not you know. I know, I know the midday mingles come. I know it. You know what I mean? It's March 19th. How do I know right. that? Because y'all using social media, y'all putting it out there. I, I didn't, didn't know that. About the Onyx and Ruby. I yeah. didn't know that. March 19th. Where's it at, Koo? Yeah, mangoes. I already yeah. know. It's like, you know what I mean? My spot. All but right. I should know that information. I should know <laughs> UC information just as well as I know that you about to throw another party. Okay, I'm taking off that that day. I'm coming to that. But to but to your That's, point, I do I do put that on social media as as well. Okay. So you know, we have to understand how algorithms work. Like a lot of black folk ain't gonna like or comment on stuff about giving money to UC, <laughs> whereas people are gonna like and talk about oh we about to turn up at at, at the midday mingle. So, so that's gonna, show up. So that's gonna stay in your album. feed because that's what Facebook is for for people to interact. And nobody interacted when I'm saying hey give sign up pay seventy five dollars for a ticket to the we got it's going right past that like what else what else we doing today you're probably right but I, hey, now, I do. <laughs> what else we doing today <laughs> so that's next that's next saturday yeah yeah all right yeah, yeah you know amigo featuring hops and stuff um, i should going to i should be there man i may have some family stuff to handle but you know i i, I do plan out if i'm not there saturday i'll be there friday after work because that's what i do friday after work mango blast you down uh, the 19th, yeah, that sounds good. All right, I'm, I'm gonna come down for that. It's cool. We I, mean, you know. I, I reserve the oh, right oh, to cancel. I'll let you know about it though. 
<laughs> hey, Glass said? already made his exit. <laughs> no, I just said I reserved the right to Nah, cancel. man, that was, a, that was a clear exit, man. <laughs> yeah, man. That's uh, four to nine. I mean, isn't that, is that Sunday? No, no this is Saturday, Saturday, bro. Saturday. I mean, isn't, Saturday. That, isn't that March they, Madness? They missed that, man. We, isn't we that peak playing. madness? Yeah, uh, it's TVs in there. It's all uh, around. It's a bunch of TVs in there. Oh, okay, hey man, yeah. that sound like that sound like a Hops and Stars networking event, man. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna come down and uh get some, we can get some content, man. I'm man, with the cards and everything, man. Get get a hundred followers at that event. Right. Said no I, might, I might have to scroll past and see what else I'm doing today. Bomb light said no soliciting <laughs> your, uh, your function. <laughs> Hey man, before we get off of here, man, we want to thank you. But just give us a little background. How did you get into? Um, you know, I know you were working other places, but you know, just real short, like how did you get into owning your own uh, business? I mean, you know, like UC, you're a graduate from UC, you're a member of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, of course, and all that. But how did you get there? Really, I just I just took a chance. I just utilized all the experience that I've had throughout the years to be real. So one of the things I've always wanted to do, be an entrepreneur, kind of work for myself and do my own thing as far as consulting. So throughout my years in IT, I would just be at a certain, uh, I would say, field, um, like every two to three years, and I would go to a different type of atmosphere. So I was in banking, then I would try retail, then I would try financial technology, pharmaceutical. So it was still IT, or even when I switched to IT audit, I still was in my field, but it was just a different entity, right? So you get to get that feel of each different industry while I'm still doing my thing. And then really when I was at uh, TriHealth, when I did IT, I was running doing IT audit for all of TriHealth, you know, COVID hit. So oh, because I'm an overhead department and you don't, we're too busy trying to save lives and no one knew what the heck was going on with COVID. I was only working two days, like two days a week. So it allowed me to kind of push more on my consulting side when I was doing web, you know, websites, some apps, um, business consulting. And then uh, Lawrence, I started consulting for him at Riskversity and we started realizing the need for really cybersecurity along those lines and really that niche of really um, quantifying data to ex your exposure for uh, cyber li liability insurance. So once business started picking up, um, cause I was pretty much running that because I wasn't really working at TriHealth, then we just decided like, you know, business is growing, let's make it happen. So awesome. Risk Mercy became a parent company, a CyberShore. So CyberShore really just came from Risk Mercy and then we just partner up on that. It's another guy who's a partner as well, who's really like a, a chief information security officer. I focus more on the vulnerability and IT audit line, but of course I still have to understand cyber because in audit, you still have to be able to understand that as well, especially in vulnerabilities. So that's really how it was birthed. And that's how I got to where, you know, where it is now. That's what's up, man. Well, congratulations with your success. Appreciate <clears throat> it, brothers. Cheers to cheers to Koo. You ain't even drinking. Yeah, it's, it's right here, man. You see it? I some you see it? You see the on the I don't went from beer to tequila, man. Hey, make sure Hops and Stocks is on the list, man. We're not paying to get into mangoes. <laughs> it's, it's free. Come to the door. Right. It's All free. Right. I know that's how you like it. That's how you like it. No. no. <laughs> We're not just breaking even. Y'all get the liquor sales? I mean, what? What, what happens? Y'all just. We got, we got to talk offline about that one, brother. <laughs> hey, hey, cool. Uh, before we let you go, man, you know, I'd, I'd be uh, hard pressed not to ask you about your. Uh... <laughs> I'm a controversial performance in flag football. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Can, 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 we talk, can we talk about that for just a second? Let's talk about it. I, Please, I, let's Hops talk and about Stocks it. Nation, man, I want y'all to know that this man, well, I mean, in, in true fairness, we all used to get smacked before our games. So, Facts. you know, we would have these early games on Sunday morning, and I'm like, what do they expect us to do? Not kick it on Saturday? And so, you know, it'd be like eight o'clock and we all was, you know, running through the motions, half sick. But man, this, this guy, cool. <laughs> he came into the huddle and he was like, I'm going to sit out this offensive series. <laughs> 
but I'll play defense. <laughs> he, he knew we could be shorthanded on offense, but he was like, you know, I, I, I'm needed out there on defense. <laughs> that was hilarious, man. It was hilarious. Hey, good times, man. You see. Yeah, yeah, that, that was bad, man. We, I, I realized we had the athletic ability to hang offensively, man. <laughs> I, was, I, was out there. I couldn't do nothing on offense anymore. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, cool. I, I was with you, man, because uh, one time uh, <clears throat> we had kicked it Saturday and it was raining Sunday. So I'm like, all right, I can sleep in. It can't be on. You know what I'm saying? It, we, it, we can't be playing. <laughs> That's not how you said it. Not- <laughs> so uh, so uh, me, Doug, and um, Laz stayed on um, the forum oh, of MLK. Okay. And, um, you know, Blast got the call from Jared, either yay or nay. So I guess it was a yay. Like, we still playing. They're so right. Blast came down the hallway, hype. He's like, it's on, it's on. Oh, I'm man. like, oh, man. I can't it believe can't, I was hype. <laughs> now, this, this man said, I don't know, Blast, I don't think you were that hype either. No, he was hype, man. Man, yeah, because I'm like, man, it was, from, dreary, it was a dreary day. I know right. I was getting some good snooze. Coming from, uh, coming from your room, all we heard was like, <laughs> man. No, no, man. Hey, Hey, just like that. (laughs) He sounds just like him, man. That's that's exactly how Blast sound, man. Uh, It wasn't me. It was beat up. It was beat up. Yeah, that's how you know he made it up. Because I never said it wasn't me, man. It was a cry. He was like, uh, I told him. <laughs> he said it was a cry. Those, those were classic days, man. We were, we was liquor. We were, we were man, just beer and liquor coming out of us, running up and down on football. Right. Yeah, yeah, man. Them white boys uh, were serving All Sunday us. morning. We won a chip though that year. Then we were was yeah. That nah, the year before I think we was good, but the next year we was hanging with Koo and Josh and Jerry getting smacked. <laughs> yeah, we y'all, y'all took us down enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we hey. get too far off the rails, hey Coop. Share with our listeners any information, like any of your socials. Socials. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to get a hold of me uh, for Cybershore, www.cybershorellc.com. Uh, um, you can find us on LinkedIn at Cybershore LLC as well. Um, you know, I, I do use um, Instagram. You could use Aku Consulting on Instagram as well. That's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, appreciate, we'll appreciate you, man. your time. We appreciate your time, and we'd like to have you back on, man, so you can give us some updates on what the Russians are doing, man. Hey, man, anytime. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm studying. That they've already shown their hand a couple months ago in the summer. They knew yeah. th- this whole war was is a setup. That was that was a trial run. Hey, the election the pipeline. They, they took run. over our election, man. They took over our election. I feel a dumb. Yep. <laughs> All right, man. Well, you guys ahead. are talking about all sorts of stuff. He shut it down, man. Hey, good, good hey, man. Yeah. All Once right, again, brother. cool. Thanks easy. for joining us. Hops and Stocks. Signing out. Episode 31. Peace. 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 Peace.